Hello Van community, um, I'm back to do a new installment of this kind of special series that I started uh, that I, uh, I call um, uh, top rated records from my collection yeah the title is down here um, and <clears throat> this is number two uh, I have 14 records to, to show you that in my opinion is five star records some background um, I have all my my entire record collection is logged on Discogs and since the beginning of my logging, I think eight years ago, I always grade a record from one to five stars because Discogs has a one to five stars grading system and only based on, on the music, not the pressing quality or the, I mean, just the music. And what I did now is I sorted my collection on Discogs rating wise and uh, I'm picking up, picking out um, my five star records for you. So what this series hopefully does is show you all my best and highest graded musical wise records in my collection. To me, at least. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching the last video. Uh, the response to that was more than I expected. I didn't think that so many would watch it and or comment. Um, so um, thank you so much and I hope you will be as active on, on this also viewing wise, I, I don't give a shit, but uh, comment wise, uh, please comment on on these these records because I would love to, to hear your opinion on, on, on these. In my opinion, the, the, these are five star records, no doubt about it. Um, the highest grading uh, a record can have. I love these records so much, uh, but obviously not everyone thinks like that. And it would be cool to, to have some, some correspondence about the, the quality of the music. So let's jump right into it. You're here to watch me show and talk about records and uh, that's what I'm going to do. First of all, uh, the first record, no surprise to anyone. Let's start off with a prog. Prog record is Suspiria, the soundtrack by Goblin, the Italian outfit from 1977, uh, the Dario Argento masterpiece of uh, European horror. And Goblin, as you all know, did soundtracks to a lot of Dario Argento movies, Profondo Rosso, Fenomena, uh, Dawn of the Dead, and so on. Uh, and I don't have many Goblin records, this is the best one in my opinion. I also love Dawn of the Dead, and I still need that in my in my collection. But I'm looking for a original or at least early press of that, and uh, they never turn out turn up here in in Sweden. So one day I'll I'll buy it online, I guess. Uh, Cinebox did a awesome job on 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 reproducing the sort of pop up on this, and the sound quality is fantastic. So highly recommend it to all you uh, to all you uh, Goblin fans out there. They do it justice. They do it justice. A five star record in my book. Moving on to some jazz. And I, many moons ago, I, I collected this, this fella, uh, at least the early, earlier stuff of his mostly 70s and, and late 60s material. And I have uh, uh, yeah, some records with, with this guy. But a five star record in his catalog, in my opinion, is turned it over by Tony Williams and his lifetime. Uh, you have John McLaughlin, uh, Larry Young, and Jack Bruce on this also. Uh, and comparing this to another almost at least five star record is Emergency, which has the same sort of like sound on it, fusion, a little bit free. Um, I think this is a, a better album in, in whole. Where, when, um, I mean, Emergency has two LPs. A two record set and has some sort of spoken word words almost by by uh, by Tony Williams. If you know it, you know it. Um, this this is a better record uh, as a as a whole. But but Emergency is also really 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 good. So check that out. Jack Bruce also did uh, Things We Like back in 1968, I think, or something like that, uh, which I think is is kind of married to those records, Emergency and Turn It Over, but. But check that out if you haven't uh, if you haven't heard that. But start with turn it over if you if you missed out. Okay, so I want to to include this 
this group. I have some that I think I've graded five stars, but gun to my head, if I have to decide on one, pick one record from the group, I pick this one. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I had this group in my metal section two years ago, but they got upgraded to my prog prog section, and I don't think I'll, I'll move them back to the to the to the metal section again. Um, yeah, I'm talking about Opeth and. The record goes Dremen Reese from 2005, and this was actually my, let's say it's my introduction to the band. I had heard Blackwater Park before this, and uh, things still life also, but it's this time period when I started to listen to to Opeth, and this was the record that that really made me fall in love with the with the band. Uh, I think it's a perfect blend between the throat voice and uh, the clear clear voice that that uh, Mikoko felt uh, uses on on this one, and I have definitely no problem with with uh, the the thought, sort of like evolvement that they have now, moving more t towards um, the the, cle the clean voice and only uh, recording that. Actually, I've heard that that they are moving back again to to throat, throat voice now, so it's going to be awesome to see what they cook up with the, the next record. But but yeah, in my opinion, gun to my head, this one is my favorite Opeth record and a five star record uh, all day long. Watershed, fantastic. Still life, as I said, fantastic. Heritage, fantastic. But Ghost Raven Reese is my favorite. Um. This is also a record that I found out about early in the VC game and I think it was Jeff the Record Man who showed this the first time. Maybe Derek or maybe Big Star, but, but some of those early guys showed this. I got interested, uh, listened to it online and I bought this, uh, unfortunately, when it came out. I haven't found a, a better press or an earlier press. Better press is any press, but but... Uh, earlier press, which I would like to, to find. This is Scott number four by Scott Walker uh, on Four Men With Beards, the worst record label next to a karma, in my opinion. Uh, there is out there lousy pressings, fantastically, uh, horribly uh, done. I got this in the US actually, I see now. I keep the, the price tags sometimes in, inside the record sleeve. 18.99. I paid for this in New York, has to be 2001, maybe. No, no, 11, 11, sorry. Um, this this is, is great. I mean, needs no introduction, really. I have uh, Scott 1 and 2 on CD also, not on vinyl. And some later stuff with Bish Bosch and uh, the, the record he did with Sano which uh, also is really, really good, but nothing uh, comes up to, to the class of, of Scott's number four. Still looking for an original copy of, of that. And one day I will burn my four men with beards copy or give to someone. So yeah, uh, another one pretty early on to the boy Ellis uh, recommended this to Anders who recommended it to me. I bought it right away. This is the only record I have with this artist in, in my in my collection, uh, but I've heard a lot online. This is is the best one that I've I've heard by by him. But there there is more one can can buy uh, without being ashamed of oneself. Uh, North Star deserted by Vic Chestnut, a uh, masterpiece of a sort of dark singer-songwriter record. Um, and there's a lot of darkness on this, but there's also also uh, beauty. Uh, which there there is <clears throat> amongst the best of the best in in the sort of singer songwriter uh, uh, genre, so to speak. Two LP set, <clears throat> fantastic. Please check this out. And <clears throat> when you're listening to the music of Vic Chestnut, read about his tragic life story and the way his life ended. It's just so damn sad. On any other place in the world i almost said uh, but at least in europe <laughs> uh, if you live there things would see different would be different for him um fucking system medical system in in the us okay uh, another one 
uh, talking about bad pressings, but I haven't found an early press of this or an, a first press. Do you? I'm, I'm look. I'm really looking. And there's been some times when I when I almost pulled the trigger and traded and stuff for for this, but don't seem to to go my way. Let's just say that, and it's skyrocketed in price also. So um, I don't know. I have to play this <clears throat> until I find a, another copy of it. But Funkadelic Maggot Brain definitely a five star record. I mean, you can't argue with the quality of the music on this one. I can't. I can't. If you're a fan of music, this is nothing less than a five-star record. Four Men With Beards, again, it sounds terrible, but the music is the music and it's good. Um, great, great, great record. Uh, Ed Hazel's guitar playing on this is to die for, and top rating, kind of like top 10, top 25, top 50 kind of guitar-based records or tunes. Listen to the title track Maggot Brain and you'll understand the solo on that one is just insane. Insane. In my last video I showed a Neil Young record, I'm going to show a Neil Young record on this too and I mean probably I'll show a Neil Young record in the next installment of these kind of videos because the man has done so much good records and, and five star records and I don't want to show uh, on the beach and tonight's the night or go, uh, after the gold rush or harvest I mean they, those everyone knows those records and probably this too but for other reasons than just the music this is a five star record I'm gonna read you some title tracks or title tracks some tracks on, on, out of this one and you'll you'll understand why just him and a piano or a guitar very sparse but the sound quality on this is just Perfect. This is a reference sort of record for me when I try out new speakers or new the new amp and or I have a new cartridge. I play this. If this sounds good, I'm good. Um, my setup upstairs, where I play most of my vinyl, is most best suited for this kind of music, like acoustic, um, sing-songwriting music, and or jazz. Uh, when it comes to like metal and punk and garage rock, uh, it doesn't sound as good as, as this. So this is definitely one of those records I play to to check it out to, to see if it's better or or not as good as as it sounded before. Some tracks on this. Listen to this. Tell me why old man journeys through the past, helpless, love in mind, a man is a maid, and heart of gold, sweet. Cowgirl in the Sand, and that's just the two first sides. Then the other LP has Don't Let It Bring You Down, There's a World, Bad Fog of Loneliness, The Needle and the Damage Done, Ohio, See the Sky About to Rain. I mean, it's just song of the song of the song. It's fucking perfect. Five star record, no doubt about it, about it. I got a pretty interesting question on my last video, and it was if you just if you can choose just one record of all the records you've shown, which one would you would you uh, would you pick? And I actually I, I produced the an answer to the to the guy or girl um, who who, uh, who asked it in the last one. In this one, I would say that that record. If I could only keep one record from all of these, I would pick that record. Um, so moving on with the less 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 good records of the best records. Um, I, I could choose five records from this guy also. Uh, David Bowie is one of my favorite artists of all time. I have almost all his studio albums and a handful of live recordings. Um, I could pick Low. Uh, that's one of my, my favorites. Uh, Sigurd Stardust, obviously. Uh, uh, Diamond Dogs also really, really good. But I went with this one. And it's it's Black Star, the last record that he he uh, released just before or just after his his death back in 2015. And this is one of those records. Like I remember exactly where I went, where, where I was, almost like how it smelled when I got the news that he was dead. Uh, I was driving uh, for work to a place. I was picking up stuff and and uh, 
a buddy of mine was was calling. He's a bigger fan than than, than me of, of Bowie, and he called and said that Bowie was dead. And we talked about that for a second, and then I called my mom, and and we talked about it um, when I was on the road, and and uh, she was actually going to a big mall, like a, a Walmart kind of thing in in Sweden. And I knew they have records. I asked her if you see David Bowie's latest, pick it up and buy a copy for my pal too. And uh, they had it, and I, I bought it. And it's a dead first press of of, um, of of this one with the the 2015 ESO records in the on the back, the information. So a dead first European press. Um, there's not a bad second on this one. Fantastic, is it? that good because it's the last one and he made it just like on his deathbed I don't know maybe probably um, but listening to this now I still get goosebumps and it's it's almost it almost hurts when you listen to it because you can hear almost that that sort of the last breath from the guy not only in his voice but also in the lyrics and and the uh, the music and the production, it's just a perfect, perfect swan song of a record. So that was my pick for David Bowie this time. Okay, next one is uh, Moody Dark Country. I don't know. Um, if you're a Lee Hazelwood fan, maybe you don't like this. I'm not a huge Lee Hazelwood fan. The guy has made some good tracks, in my opinion, but this is a masterpiece. Uh, this is Lee Hazelwood's Requiem for an Almost Lady from 1971, recorded in the, the US, <laughs> California, I think, yeah, Hollywood, and uh, pressed in Sweden on Viking Records. Um, it was also pressed in the UK and in Germany, and all the pressings have the title and the artist in red letters except this one. There's another Swedish press of this on Viking Records that has the red letters just as anyone else, but this pressing in particular has yellow and, and white uh, title and, and artist. So if you have this, check it out, uh, see what pressing you have. Um, I don't know if that makes it a second one or if that makes it a first one. Um, I really don't know, but, but uh, kind of a cool uh, information kind of thingy. I love my mom. She she knows I'm a fanatic uh, of collecting vinyl records. So the last five, six, seven years, all Christmases has been like she she calls me up, say, "What do you want? Order it, and uh, uh, you'll get that for Christmas." And I've always bought box sets for one reason or another, but mainly because I don't pay up for box sets with my own money. So when <laughs> When mom buys me something for Christmas, uh, I always pick a, a box set. And a couple of years ago, I got the Chris Bell box set. I have got the Fantomas box set and the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers Volume 2 uh, studio album box set from 94-2014. I'm watching the box set right now. But this year, uh, not this year, but that year, uh, I ordered this for myself from her Cannes The Lost Tapes 1968-75 and this is a, is a five star record demos, live takes, outtakes you know the the old usual deal when it comes to, to this material but 2012 uh, but I mean I've listened to a lot of compilations and outtake records and box sets I mean Bob Dylan's bootleg series is this one and there's Miles Davis has has made some too and and with all of the those and they, those are good records good box sets with all of those I've always found one or two or five tracks that is just like nah, I can understand why he he left that on the cutting room floor um, and didn't include that or this in on the on the record with this box it's like every single song is even the live takes is is like perfect and so interesting and it comes with a book also also fantastic um, and I don't think I've ever experienced another box set that is like this um, being that good five-star record to me 
1998, uh, a couple of punk lads in north of, or kids really, in north of Sweden, up where Christopher lives almost, um, revolutionized and totally just turned the table on uh, an entire genre. And the record I'm talking about is Refuse the Shape of Punk to Come. Um, such an amazing, amazing record. Uh, and I'm not saying that just because I'm a Swede. It's it's a it's a bloody fact that this is is highly si significant in like a historical music piece, uh, revolutionizing both the punk and hardcore um, genre. Uh, it's so good, so so damn good. And this pressing from Epitaph. Uh, 2010 includes the DVD movie Refuse or Fucking Dead, which is um, the the movie done by the drummer, I think that he did. He did, he did uh, the 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 documentary, and it's about the North American tour that they did and decided to break up and uh, and finish the the, the band. Uh, nowadays they they record again and they. Uh, uh, tour but there were many many years where they were fucking dead uh, very good documentary three more to go also a VC kind of favorite a lot of hype around this record when it was released but um, well deserved in my opinion um, and I think it was Dan from Canada that showed this the first time and or talked about them Maybe it was that he talked about them and their previous records and that this was coming out and I sampled it uh, online and, and, and bought the record. Shortly after that they did a European tour and I saw them here in Sweden on a very small venue. Maybe a hundred people in the, in the audience. I was right there in front of, uh, of the band. Played on a small, small stage which was in the, the same uh, height as all uh, the other other ones uh, in the in the audience. Really cool, um, fantastic concert. Uh, sound almost exactly like the the record when they when they played. And I'm talking about Earth, uh, Angels of Darkness, Demons of Light, Part One. I guess they released Part Two uh, a year or two after after this. Now I've heard some Earth material previous to this that I think is okay. I haven't heard anything after this that I think is okay. Uh, and this is a five star record. So moody, so uh, like, like the, the, the feeling of the record is just like, uh, you can almost smell how this sounds if you understand what I, what I mean. Very dirty, very droney. Um, Perfect, perfect record. Five songs on two LPs, so long, long, long ass drones with cello playing. It's, it's fantastic. Check, check it out if you haven't heard it. It's, it's in my opinion a five star record all day long. And I couldn't, I, I could, I couldn't show five star records without showing some Swedish stuff. So the last two are Swedish records, more or less uh, jazz related. This first one is a reissue from 2011. I think, or 10, 11, uh, recorded in 1971, late 71, so maybe released 1972, but um, the story behind this is uh, studio musicians was invited for a session late, late in the night, because that was the only time they could afford the studio time, when no one else was, was recording. Uh, they went in, they cut the, uh, the session live, and the result is... is uh, Hörselmott with Svenska Lörd uh, AB, a uh, cult classic in the Swedish kind of collector's catalog. Today this fetches uh, $1,000 plus dollars when you buy it uh, in, in pretty good condition. And the reissue is, is issued in a thousand copies back in 2011. It's still kind of easy to find and you don't have to pay like... Uh, extreme sums for the for the reissue uh, it sounds perfect like really really perfect uh, so i think it's from the rune figaro figaro music they did a, an amazing job on on reissuing this sound wise 
uh, highly recommended. Jazz fusion with a splash of funk. But, but that's just because that it's kind of sound in the, the early 70s here in Sweden with the jazz fusion has a little bit of that world influence which makes sometimes makes the fusion a little bit funky i don't know if you if you get what i'm what i'm going with that but but yeah and the last one 1975 is mount everest trio waves from albert eiler and um, also a five star record in my opinion starts off with a ornette coleman song and then they go on to, to play spirits with albert eiler and then original uh, tracks almost all the way through at least 1975 free jazz yeah, free jazz. Let's just call it that. Fantastic trio, the best record that they put out, in in my opinion. Um, yeah, just all the way through, good record, solid record. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed some of it, um, and uh, you may or not, you may or not may agree with me. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm a little bit tired. Um, but please comment if you do or if you don't. Uh, I would like to hear from you guys uh, what you think. Uh, my recommendation is that if you don't know about these records and you are into the genre that they are in, please check them out because uh, if it's not a five star record to you, maybe there's, there should be at least, there should be something that you can enjoy with the, with the record, uh, like the jazz or the prog or the or the uh, country record even so uh, so yeah until uh, next time uh, and there will be more times with this installment because i think it's been awesome to to research my own collection and showing you guys my my top top spots music wise at least so yeah talk to you soon bye